Your Excellency, Dr. Emerson Dambuzo Mandagagwa, President of the Sister Republic of Zimbabwe. Your Excellency, Minister Claire Vajati, Minister for Public Service, Labor and Social Affairs. Your Excellency, my dear, bright, and beautiful sister, Dr. Amina Mohammed, Under Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Excellency, my sister, Vera Songwe, Under Secretary General, and you and ECA Executive Secretary. My young man here, with young people like this, the future for Africa is definitely bright. Congratulations, my brother. Your Excellency, the President, I'm truly delighted and humbled in equal measure to be able to address this session on the Regional Sustainable Forum here at Victoria Falls in our dear sister republic of Zimbabwe. Allow me, therefore, on behalf of the chairperson of the African Union, Musa Faki Mahamat, to welcome everybody to this forum. Thank you, Mr. President for sparing time to be with us. Your presence here is clear demonstration and manifestation of your commitment to the development of our dear continent and for the realization of the need to build up the Africa we want and the Africa we so fervently need. Mr. President, your in-laws in Ghana have instructed me to salute you. <laughs> We believe once an in-law, always an in-law. <laughs> and I feel particularly happy to be here with you. Thank you also for your leadership. It is a leadership of inspiration to us all. It was the late, the great Winston Spencer Churchill who famously wrote that the further back you look, the further forward you are likely to see. The year 2020 is an important milestone for Agenda 2030 and its twin sister, Agenda 2063, for a number of reasons. It marks five years since the adoption of the continental and global agenda. Only three years remain to the completion of the first 10-year implementation program of Agenda 2063. The world as a whole has, in reality, less than 10 years to target the achievement of these laudable objectives. The year 2020 also coincides with the 75th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations. So, Your Excellencies, as we gather here today in this historic, historic place of Victoria Falls, our task here is to deliver the main theme of our summit this year, silencing the guns to create a conducive environment for Africa's development. It is by now sufficiently clear to all of us that without peace, security, and stability, prosperity in Africa will continue to remain elusive. And without peace and security, our commitment to leave no one behind who remain mere talk. The potential consequences for our teeming youth, if we continue this way, will be too dark to contemplate. This really is a challenge. Africa has made some progress, but available data shows that this progress is mixed and uneven. Poverty rates are declining, and access to primary education, health, and electricity are improving. Gender parity at a lower level of education continues to improve, while representation of women in national parliaments has shown some positive change. But, Your Excellencies, this progress is insufficient. Of these many goals, there are variations within countries and within the continent. Population growth rates remain high. Opportunities for decent jobs are not keeping pace with population growth. Lack of quality education and access to health service is a stark reality. Many of our people, particularly our youth, our women, and our girls, 
continue to be left behind. Persistent inequalities on the continent remain with us still. Data gaps, as the indicators show, this challenge is real. What then is to be done? So this forum is more than opportune. It is the time for us to reinforce our joint implementation, our monitoring, our reviewing, our reporting, and our resource mobilization to be able to achieve the Agenda 2063 and the SDG 2030. That is why we are particularly grateful for the opportunity to be here, and we are honored by your presence and your commitment. The African Union has been advancing advocating for joint implementation, and the presence of my sister Amina shows that we have taken that in hand. So we are working together, Your Excellency, African governments to accelerate the efforts to internalize, integrate, and implement these lofty resolutions that our heads of states have put before us. Now, the task for us as public administrators is to reduce these lofty aims, this lofty ambition into actionable administrative measures to bring this to the ground so that we can achieve what we want. This is the task of the civil service of public administrators. But before we can make the progress, Your Excellencies, the key factor has always remained and continues to remain education, 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 science, technology, planning, and employment. So that when our young ones leave school, they know what they are going to do. But thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you once again, Your Excellency, for your commitment.